Even 16 years after release, which is a ridiculous amount of time, Grand Theft Auto 4 and the episodes from Liberty City still have some crazy and obscure glitches that I bet you've never seen before. Unless you happen to be somewhat up to date on the speedrunning scene of all three games. These insane glitches that I'm about to show you are all found by yours truly. And while not all of them are applicable and currently used in the speedrunning categories of each game, they're all equally mind-blowing. Although The Lost and Damned as well as The Ballad of Gay Tony are DLCs and therefore the mechanics from GTA 4 are pretty much the same, not all of these glitches work in all games, as some of them are tied to specific side activities that are exclusive to only one of them. Like the first glitch which can only be executed in The Ballad of Gay Tony where you can teleport across the map using Armando's gun van. Some cats up on Chase Point. Oh. Check it out. Ah! Oh, yeah, you're a lifesaver. Ah! Ah! Nos vemos, loco. Say hi to H for me. Quite insane, isn't it? Normally you can taxi to your destinations in most missions, however you are required to drive a specific car, like Maury's Buffalo in this case. But these drives can be almost entirely skipped by teleporting to a set location on the map where the gun van can spawn. Before starting a mission, call Armando a few blocks away from where you actually want him to spawn using this map as a reference. Because calling him while you're inside of the grey area will make him spawn to the next closest location to you. Then using a mission fail text, go up to him, confirm the restart, then quickly press E to activate his gun van. A few seconds after the mission begins, you will teleport back to his van along with the car you're in and any passenger that might be inside. I think this is quite an impressive glitch. And in the any% percent speedrun of this game, you can save around 5 to 10 seconds depending on how long the drive is. Not a lot of time for the complexity of this trick, but over the course of the run you end up using it in a lot of spots, so the total time save is upwards of 1 minute. Unfortunately, this trick is exclusive to this DLC and doesn't work in neither the base game nor in the Lost and Damned, and that is due to the developers adding a slight delay before you lose control of Luis, which makes this glitch possible in the first place. I'm not sure as to why the developers added the slight delay to only the Ballad of Gay Tony, but the result is a unique teleporting glitch. It is also with the use of this glitched gun van that we can bring guns into the notorious cage fighting minigame, but only during the mission Mama's Boy. Upon starting the mission, call Armando and either kill or lose Santos, then go to his gun van location, start the mission and bring up the weapons menu. And after you fail the mission a second time, try to make your way into a nearby taxi so as to reset your camera. Now this part can be a bit tricky because of the fixed camera and the controls that are seemingly reversed. If you successfully manage to navigate the map and get in and out of a taxi, you would then have your camera reset. Then start the mission again and walk along Santos until you reach your destination. While you're in this fighting minigame, guns are completely disabled. But if you happen to buy one or manage to select one that you already own, it will appear in your hands, granting you with the ability to shoot your opponents. Which surprisingly doesn't mission fail you, although I assume the developers never thought someone could possibly manage to glitch in a gun. Regardless, this is quite funny. You might be tempted to try this for the regular cage fighting minigame that is available after completing this mission. However, you can't start any mission whilst the menu is up, with the obvious exception of mission retry text messages, which sort of forces the game into starting them. Up next we have The Lost and Damned, where I will again show you two glitches that can only be executed for this game. And the first one is a glitch that allows you to gain an unfair advantage in the races that can be done around the map. Upon entering a race for the very first time, you'll be met with a cutscene in which Terry gives you a bat before starting the race, then after the cutscene ends, a countdown for the race will begin where both your camera and movement are obviously stuck in place so as to not get ahead of your opponents. However, if you call Terry before the race and request a gun van, something quite interesting will happen. Hey, it's Johnny. I need some of your merchandise. How soon can you get here? No problem, Johnny. I'll be over soon. Stay out of here. 
Right, brother. Let's have ourselves a race. Nice bat, man. I'll try not to smack you in the face with it. <laughs> That's right, you can freely move around during the cutscene, as it's an in-game one and not a cinematic, and for some reason that I can't explain, Terry's character is glued to you and will move alongside Johnny's bike. But as you can see, this regained movement in camera control is also possible during the 3 second countdown for the actual race, which not only gives you a very unfair advantage, but ends up saving a bit of time in the 100% speedrunning category. This glitch however cannot be used for every single race, as Terry's gun van, as well as Armando's and little Jacob's, all have a cooldown of 4 in-game hours. But in the individual level categories, which consist of only these races, it can be used for all of them, and it does save a few seconds or more, depending on how well you can navigate whilst being unable to see where you're actually going. Although runners do make use of the pause menu, which is accessible, to get a decent idea of where they're at. As for why it actually works the way it does, I have absolutely no clue. Since Terry is part of all of these races, and upon starting them, the game seemingly removes him and his van from the map, so as for him to not be in two places at once, there must be some correlation to that. But he can be spotted in two places at once. As during the mission Action Reaction for example, in which he is also a part of, on the ride to the AOD clubhouse, if you call him before starting the mission and enter while the phone is still ringing, his gun van won't be deleted, and if you go to his location, he's patiently waiting for you, whilst also being part of the crew that assists us in the mission. You might say that this is a simple developer oversight, but I'm inclined to think that either this man has a twin or found a way to clone himself. But this only works if you enter the marker while the phone is still ringing, because if you let the call end normally and then start the mission, his gun van will be deleted as intended. And finally, I will tease you with a very complex method of being able to enter a mission while the game still thinks you're in free roam, a mission state often referred to as OM0 or On Mission 0, which can be done in almost every GTA game including 4 and 5. And this might sound hilarious, but it requires a visit to the nearest strip club. But I'm not sure how much I can show you without getting age restricted. Fortunately, this trick works in all three of the games. The setup is quite simple. Either start a job from a phone, like Roman's taxi work or Angus's bike theft for T-Lad, but make sure you are very close to the strip club when doing so. After the job started, go up to a girl and accept her dance. Once it starts, you can exit right away, and although the minimap can end up looking the same, you are now in a OM0 state where you can receive texts and phone calls, save your game, although it doesn't quite work, hang out with friends or start another mission, which will crash your game. For speedrunning, this trick is only used in GTA 4's Catch the Wave mission, which conveniently starts from honkers, so the dancers don't get despawned and you can go into the OM0 state. This is done in order to receive a lot of story mode calls and texts while waiting around for Phil's boat to reach its destination. Since there aren't any jobs you can start from your phone in the Ballad of Gay Tony, you can alternatively use a mission that starts from a phone call, which in this game there's only one, block this part too. It can potentially also be used in the Ballad of Gay Tony's 100% speedrun to re-enable taxis during the drug war side missions, with an even more complicated setup, but as of right now, no runs make use of this trick. This glitch requires a video of its own to explain it fully and list all the other byproducts that can derive from it. So if you're interested in one, let me know in the comment section down below. And while you're there, also leave a like. There are plenty more glitches that you've probably never heard of in these games that are either exclusive to one of them, like being able to use your wardrobe to become invincible in the free roam, or ones that are available for all three games like being able to taxi anywhere on the map, including the ocean. But for the first time, I only wanted to showcase glitches that I have found myself. But that's gonna be all for today. Again, leave your thoughts in the comment section down below, as well as giving a like to this video. And of course, consider subscribing if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching.